gadgetmobile.com. And uh, the big news uh, in the mobile phone world and really in the gadget world and consumer tech world in general coming out of this past week of trade shows, CES and Mac World 2009, has to be the Palm Pre. Uh, Palm and Sprint, for that matter, really making a strong effort to resurrect themselves. Both companies have been hit by hard times and uh, really came back with a, with a boom, um, with a bang, with a lightning bolt, you know what I mean, uh, with the announcement of the Palm Pre and, and Palm's new WebOS operating system at CES last week. Now, the Pre is going to be a Sprint exclusive here in the United States. Uh, they said it's going to be coming out sometime in the first half of 2009, which could mean as late as June, hopefully sooner than that. So we're going to take a look at what we know so far about the Pre, uh, kind of head-to-head -head against really what I think are its two main competitors right now, the Apple iPhone 3G and the T-Mobile G1 and the uh, Google Android-powered, or Google Android platform, rather. The G1 is an Android-powered phone. There'll be more. Android devices coming out soon uh, on T-Mobile in the U.S., the G2 from HTC, and then some other competitors, including the uh, Australian-built Kogan Agora and Agora Pro mobile phones, unlocked GSM phones that are supposed to ship at the end of January. Anyway, we'll take a head-to-head -head look at what we know about the Pre and how it stacks up against the iPhone 3G and the Android platform. So here we go. So here's a look at what we know about the Palm Pre so far. The Pre was announced at CES just a week ago and is going to be coming to the U.S. on Sprint as an exclusive. This means it will run on their CDMA network and have Evdu Reve for high-speed 3G web browsing. Um, also, there will be a GSM unlocked version of the Pre, but we don't know much about that yet. You can see the Pre is a slider phone with a full QWERTY thumb board. It's got a multi-touch display, 3 megapixel camera on the back with flash. It's a brand new operating system, and really it's the operating system that I think has really caught everybody's eye. The hardware looks nice, but the OS looks killer. It's been built around web services, and so it should provide easy development for developers looking to take advantage of web services. Now, when it comes to more involved applications like high-performance gaming, you might not see the same performance on Pre as you do on a phone like the iPhone, because of the, the OS being built around web services. You just can't do quite as much with high-performance gaming. But as you can see, it's got what looks like a great web browser. It's built around WebKit, and it has lots of integration with web-based services, messaging, social networking apps, emails, calendar sync, all that. One of the things that's really caught bloggers' eyes about the pre-OS is the dashboard notification system. It looks kind of similar to the G1, where when you get new messages, push to you from your email account or SMS, IM, Facebook, all that kind of stuff, they show up in a dashboard. Unlike on a phone like the iPhone or a Blackberry where you get a notification that goes on top of your screen and you have to stop what you're doing to deal with it, it looks like on the Pre you'll just get kind of, you know, a notification window or like a little uh, drawer like on the G1 that lets you know you've got, you know, two new emails, a couple new IMs, a couple new Facebook messages, all that kind of stuff. Very cool, looks very handy for the always connected, always on the go social networking generation. Also, you've got a very multimedia friendly design with uh, lots of good integration for managing your photos, videos, playing music back, all that kind of stuff. And it looks like you can do multitasking so you can be listening to your music in the background while you're browsing the web or dealing with all those Facebook friend requests you get because you're so popular. So judging only from the demos we saw at CES, which were not final production models, the Pre looks to stack up pretty nicely against both the HTC G1, which is available on T-Mobile in the US and runs Google's Android operating system, and Apple's ever popular iPhone 3G, which is available globally and runs Apple's own proprietary OS X for mobile operating system. As compared to the G1, the Pre looks to be a little bit smaller and thinner and offers similar integration with Gmail and messaging as the G1, but trumped up a bit to include more support for web-based services like Facebook and other social networking platforms. Compared to iPhone 3G, Pre's got a brand new operating system which looks great and was developed under the vision of an ex-Apple executive in John Rubenstein. Pre also has a slide-out QWERTY keyboard, something Apple iPhone does not have. iPhone 3G relies entirely on the touchscreen, including the use of a virtual QWERTY board. Now, even if the Pre's hardware and software are as great when they're launched as they look in these demos, 
there are a few obstacles standing in the way from Palm and Sprint getting back to the top of the heat. First off is Sprint's brand image. Deserve it or not, Sprint's got some image issues to deal with here in the US. Even though they constantly score at the top or near the top of 3G data speed tests, and you know they get a lot of good feedback in terms of their actual quality of signal and voice, the company's been churning customers and losing money for the past year or so. Now I can say that I've generally had nothing but good experiences using Sprint devices when I've tested them here in the San Francisco, California Bay Area. Now what I mean is that I generally have good reception, good call quality, and like I said, the 3G data speeds are always near or at the top of the heap when I test them head-to-head -head against Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile devices. The thing I hear a lot from people who are current or former Sprint customers are quotes like, I never dropped a call, but customer service was a nightmare. That's the kind of thing that gives a company a bad rap. And again, I'm not saying it is or isn't deserved. I'm just saying that from reports I've heard myself from readers and viewers of the phone dog site, and also things I've read on the web, Sprint's definitely got a PR image problem. Now, a cool phone like the Pre could go a long way towards boosting that up. Sprint had pretty good success with the Instinct last year, and the Pre looks to be, you know, even more of what they were hoping to get out of the Instinct. I don't want to say iPhone killer because that term's kind of overused, but, you know, it really is. Multi-touch, uh, the new OS, slide-out keyboard, a former Apple executive running the project. At the launch at CES, I mean, they really, the Palm guys really took some direct shots at Apple. So, you know, again, we'll have to see. Another big issue is going to be pricing. Now, we've only heard rumors at this point, but what I'm hearing right now is that the Pre is going to list for, or sell rather, without contract for somewhere in the 4 to 5 maybe $550 range, which means that on contract on Sprint with a two-year commitment, that would put it right down in the iPhone G1 territory, iPhone selling for $199 on AT&T for the 8-gig model with a contract. The G1 sells for $179 right now on T-Mobile. So you could see a subsidized uh, pre on Sprint for somewhere in the uh, you know 199 range. Now we heard some comments from Palm executives earlier about saying something like you know why would we sell it cheaper than the iPhone if it's got better hardware? But uh, I think those might have been kind of taken out of context or I don't know. Again, nothing firm, but the latest I'm hearing is that it will be in the sub $200 range, which is really important. I could see people you know checking out the pre as compared to an iPhone or a new Android device. You know, even though it's a brand new thing, people taking a chance on it, if it looks really cool, looks like it acts well, and, or, you know, performs well, rather, and uh, integrates well with web services that people use so much of, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, Gmail, all that kind of stuff, but only if it's priced competitively. If the price is up in the $250, $300 range, you know, and the uh, iPhone and even Android are already established, I don't know if people are going to go for that. The second big thing is going to be the App Store. The Apple App Store for iPhone and iPod Touch has been a huge success so far. There are thousands and thousands of apps. Apple's making a ton of money off of the apps, and there's everything from games to productivity to silly little things like Koi Pond that are just for fun, uh, connections to all your favorite web services, radio, all that kind of stuff. Now, the pre-promises to do a lot of the web service integration right on the device. So again, kind of like Android's got that really nifty slide-down notification bar, pre looks like it's got that and then some. So some of that will be taken care of. But the thing is, especially in today's economy, and especially with these phones, the hardware just being better and better, you know, it's less of a thing where people are looking to get a phone and replace it in a year than they're looking to pay a little more for a phone, invest in a platform, and then extend it via software. Apple has really turned that, which, you know, smartphone users have been doing for years, they've really made that a consumer-friendly experience with the App Store, and it's paying off for them. So Android with the Android Marketplace, and now the Palm Pre with, uh, I think they're going to call it the application catalog. You know, it's really going to be important for them to beef that up, get a lot of cool apps out there, get developers happening with the Pre and the WebOS uh, platform, and get a lot of cool stuff out there so people, you know, can get their device and then spend five, ten bucks every now and then and make it feel like a whole new device with a cool new app. From what I've heard early reports, again, from uh, developers, is that uh, the Mojo SDK, as they're calling it, the Palm Pre uh, development environment, is very cool, very easy to work with. As I said, it might not have the, uh, you know, full-on, all the tools for making really complex applications that run natively, like hardcore gaming, but uh, for a lot of the, service, the applications that take advantage of web services, apparently it's really easy to develop in 
And you know, it uses a lot of tools that web developers are used to using, CSS, JavaScript, all that stuff, which is great. Also, we're hearing that the Pre will not be the only Palm device to be running the WebOS. We'll be seeing other Palm devices with the new WebOS as well. So there you go, should be exciting stuff. Uh, the Palm Pre, the uh, forthcoming Google phone, you know, uh, Google Android powered phones, the G2. We had some news today about the uh, codename Sapphire G2 for T-Mobile, so check that out. Got another video on that one. And then iPhone, hearing rumors already about uh, a new multi-core iPhone with um, a new operating system, iPhone OS 3.0, that would support, support multi-core. A multi-core iPhone, who knows what that could do. We should be seeing something new from Apple and AT&T come June in the way of a new iPhone. So there you go, just a little preview of what we know so far about the Palm Pre, how it stacks up against the Android phones and the iPhone. Much, much more on all this stuff all the time every day on PhoneDog.com. I'm Noah. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah.